Here's another problem on cardinality. In this case, we use uncountable sets. So I want to show that the three sets, closed interval 0, 1, half open interval 0, 1, and open interval 0, 1, all have the same cardinality. The trick here will be shifting. And once we have the solution for this problem, we'll take it to the next step to show that the set of irrationals in closed interval 0, 1 has the same cardinality as closed interval 0, 1. Now, let's recall okay, the main ideas behind cardinality. So we'll say two sets, x and y, have the same cardinality if we can construct a 1, 1 correspondence f between our sets. So recall, 1 to 1 correspondence just means 1 to 1 and on to. And the way we think of this, we're just taking all the points of x and relabeling with the names of the points in y. So we use every label from y, and we use each label exactly once. So example, which will be helpful for solution. If I take the natural numbers, Okay, so here my natural numbers start at 1. We'll have 1 to 1 correspondence between the natural numbers and the natural numbers including 0 by just setting the natural number n to n minus 1. So, okay, not too tough to show that that's a 1 to 1 correspondence. So these two sets have the same cardinality. And all we're doing is relabeling each point here by going to the point 1 less. Okay, so we label 1 as 0, 2 as 1, 3 as 2, and so on. All labels get used, and they get used exactly once. Now, a useful way to think of countably infinite sets is in terms of sequences. So for our previous example, I can think of the natural numbers as being a sequence, 1, 2, 3, and so on. The natural numbers including 0, we have the sequence 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. And our previous map is just taking the sequence here. I shift each term to the right by 1. And then we stick in a 0. So that's a nice way to see that 1 to 1 correspondence. Now, how does that apply to our problem? So not directly to the entire set, but since okay, the closed interval 0, 1 is uncountable, we could take out a countable subset, create a sequence, and then just apply this trick to that sequence. So what I can do is, if I want to go from closed interval 0, 1 to half open interval 0, 1, OK, so the question is, what do we do with a 0? What I'll do is, in this closed interval, we're going to consider the sequence given by okay, 1 over n for n greater than or equal to 2. So I'll have 1 half, 1 third, 1 fourth, 1 fifth. And these numbers are going to go all the way down to 0. So we're going to have room for all of them. Now, key is going to be, if I want to take out this 0 on the left, I'm just going to take each of our 1 over n's, shift to 1 over n plus 1. Then I'm going to take 0 and stick it in at the 1 half spot. So all numbers are accounted for. That 0 is moved to 1 half. Of course, I want to describe f explicitly as a function. So if we define a as the set 1 half, 1 third, 1 fourth, and so on, union with the point 0, on the closed interval 0, 1, throw away a. I'm just going to send each point x to itself. Then on a, I send 0 to 1 half. 1 over n goes to 1 over n plus 1 when n is strictly bigger than 2. So with that, I'll leave it to you to show that f is 1 to 1 on 2. Now, if I want to show that closed interval 0, 1 and open interval 0, 1 have the same cardinality, same trick. So instead of shifting by 1 here, we're going to use the same sequence, shift by 2. So all I need to do is, Okay, I'll move the 0 to 1 third. The 1 is going to go to 1 half. And then we proceed on the other numbers as usual. So I'll leave it to you to wrap the function and show that it's 1 to 1 on to. Now, if we want to take this one step beyond, 
Okay, I can show that the irrationals in the closed interval zero one have the same cardinality as the closed interval zero one. So our outline for this, same idea. I wanna use a sequence, but here I don't wanna use a sequence of rational numbers because I wanna stay in the set of irrationals. So I'm gonna use the sequence, one over square root of two, one over square root of three, one over square root of five. Okay, I'm gonna use all one over square root of a prime number. So you may need to do some proving to verify that that's a sequence of irrational numbers. Then, since we know that the rational numbers are countable, I'm just gonna enumerate the rational numbers that are in the closed interval zero, one. That's gonna give me a sequence. Then we're gonna interlace this sequence with this sequence, and then replace as we did before. Let's note what we're trying to do. Start with the closed interval zero, one. We remove the rationals from that interval. So we'll be left with just the irrationals. Then we're gonna take a sequence out of the irrationals. So it's gonna leave us room to replace with a new sequence. We take the rationals and the sequence, intertwine to get a new sequence, and then replace where the old sequence was. So that's how we're gonna get our one-to-one -one correspondence. Now, let's go through step by step. So I'm gonna start with close interval zero, one. We're gonna take out the rational numbers from this interval. And then we're gonna take out a sequence of irrationals. So I can use one over square root of two, one over square root of three, one over square root of five. If you need a picture, it's gonna look a lot like what we had before. Start at one over square root of two. And then as we increase in the denominator, we're just gonna go down towards zero as the sequence moves on. So we're gonna remove that from our irrational numbers. Now, that gives us one sequence. I want a second sequence, which we get by just enumerating the rationals that are in our interval. Okay, so that just means we're gonna line up our rationals as a sequence. So, okay, a lot of ways we can do that, but we just know that we can do it. So I could have zero, one, one half, three fourths, and so on. And we'll just call that the sequence B sub n. Next step, I form a new sequence. We'll call that C sub n. And that's just gonna be given by alternating between our first sequence and the rational sequence. So I'll have a1, b1, a2, b2. Okay, numerically with the choices here, we have one over square root of two, zero, one over square root of three, one, and so on. Now, to define our one-to-one -one correspondence, same idea as before. We're gonna take the irrational numbers, throw away the sequence. On these points, we're just gonna send each point to itself. So this is just gonna be the irrationals without the one over square root of p's. Okay, on this new sequence, so note we're in the closed interval zero, one, so I have to account for what's happening on the rationals and on the one over square root of p sequence. Here, I'm just gonna take each c sub i Okay, each C sub i is either a rational or a one over square root of P. And then we're gonna send that to the point A sub i. So the A sub i here is gonna be a one over square root of P. So we're taking rational or one over square root of P, sending it to a one over square root of P. So what we're doing is we're hiding all these rationals in points that are the form one over square root of P that are irrational. Now, note, okay, that gives us our function and so I leave it to you to show that that's one to one and on to. And that'll show that the cardinality of the closed interval zero one is the same as the cardinality of the irrational numbers in closed interval zero one.